Hello everyone, and welcome to another video, another 3D video. Uh, I would say it's been a while since I did the last one, but I, it probably has been a while since I went up to Sully. But here we are with another 3D video, and this is one I've been wanting to do for a while. Uh, Udavar Hazi is a cool museum, and I like going up there, and they got a nice IMAX there, although they haven't shown any IMAX 3D things since... Gee, man, it's it's been a hot minute. They didn't even show Multiverse of Madness in 3D up there. And as you guys requested, this is the full uncut version of this video. And if you don't want to listen to my voice, then uh, you can go ahead and mute the video. Put on your own music in the background. Uh, I won't be offended. I mean, I won't know, but I won't, uh, won't really care either. Do what you want to do and... Enjoy the beautiful 3D visuals. You know, I always think to myself, like, I'm going to be all like, meh, when I go do these videos. And then I take the footage home and look at it on my computer. And I'm just blown away by how cool it looks. I fall in love with the format all over again. And it's even more amazing that I did this. I went out and I did the 3D. It's one of those... The whole reason behind this channel is because... I was looking at the 3D Blu-ray release landscape. Actually, the whole reason I wanted to start doing 3D for myself in general was because that there weren't as many 3D Blu-rays coming out. And I had just gotten this LG Cinema 3D TV. And I was like, you know, if uh, they're not going to make content for it, then I'm going to do it myself. And uh, that's what I've done. I went all Thanos, man. I pulled out my Infinity 3D rig, and I said, fine, I'll do it myself. Now, the 3D isn't going to be 100% great in the entirety of this video. Usually when I do a highlight reel, I cut out a lot of the weird idiosyncrasies that come along with 3D. But uh, just keep that in mind. <laughs> I might cut a few things. There's one or two moments where I try to readjust the cameras to make sure they're pointing straight forward. But we'll see. The 3D in here is really good, though. I'm sitting back. I'm watching the side-by-side -side version on my 3D TV, and it looks absolutely stunning. And I think this new little baby rig that I have, one, it's way more palatable, and people are less afraid because the alternative is using a giant metal bar. Uh, but it's way more palatable, way more mobile, and professional looking and it does get results a bit more consistent and allows me to get the cameras closer together when I need to and even in here you can see the 3d the 3d here is actually a little bit more extreme that's the wrong word I followed through with the thought even though it wasn't the right thought the cameras are actually farther apart here than they were when I did the Sully video because I knew that I was going to be in a large open space and if I wanted to have objects off in the distance or objects hanging from the ceiling have volume to it I would need to do that some of these shots look incredible like this is actually something I'd want to sit down and show somebody and I got a lot of great pop out too a lot of fun pop out moments there are some shots that I did tailor well when I was editing it, I took some screenshots and posted them to my Discord, which you can find the link for that in the description. So, the shots in the video aren't going to 100% match up with those. Ooh, 3D's a bit wonky here. The shots in the video aren't going to 100% match up with those, but they're going to come close enough. It's different when you have to change the horizontal offset during a video versus just for a still photo hope you guys like the ceiling here the wings and the planes at different heights also provide for a good this was a really good 3d video idea oh here we go big 3d money shot one of the big ones anyway there's a lot of planes with pointy sticks at the end and i was like i gotta get it you can't really tell this one too good because it's so straight on So what's happened since the last time I made a, this is, I guess you could count this as a life update. If you're not listening to the audio on this right now, then it's not really a life update for you. You're just kind of enjoying the 3D visuals. 
with some uh, rock and jams or some smooth jazz, whatever have you. But a lot's happened since the last video that I made, and I well, I'll just start off with the biggest change. Is I got it. I have a new job now. I work at another theater chain, which I, I won't say, but I'm only been there for a week. And I really enjoy the people I'm working with. The environment just feels completely different. Like there's a whole different tone and feel. Everyone's always pulling their own weight. And everyone I work with is cool. And it's great. Love these old planes. Getting off topic. So if you work with me and you see this video and you come to this part, go ahead and type in the comment section the code word Baba Booey, or you can privately message me on Discord and say it, and I'll know that you watched at least up to this part in the video. Well, lots of cool people there. Um, am I out of things to say? I can't be. This museum, I remember the first time I went up here, I was absolutely blown away. I was floored. But I, I couldn't tell you the first... I think the first time I was up here was to see the rise of no not the rise of skywalker the first time i was up here to, was to see the last jedi i believe i think that could be wrong i know i saw the last jedi at this imax theater in 3d which the imax presentation for that the, the theater is perfect it's immaculate but they didn't really do anything with the imax uh format for that movie it was kind of a waste I mean, the movie is just kind of a waste in general. That's a whole other can of worms. I ain't even going to get into that. So one of the things I missed about going, I didn't like miss it, but I didn't like not miss it. It's not something that is at the forefront of my mind. That was a good shot. There's a lot of good shots here, but I didn't want my batteries to die. And there was a lot of museum to see. So I, I just kept going. I'm like, ah, it'll be good enough. I can just get uh, screenshots and post those if I don't. One of the things I missed about doing this is how many people do get interested. Like, oh, what do you got there? Oh, that's, you know, uh, actually, I should start from the top. So when I was coming up here to do this. Oh, all right. So this is when a guy started talking to me about the cameras. I'm swaying it back and forth like really hard because I wasn't expecting him to talk to me. But when I was coming up here, I went in first to the front desk. I'm like, hey, uh, I was wondering if I could do... A 3d video here you know it's a little small rig it's got two cameras on it and i show them a picture and i'm like hey is this all right because you know these are this is technically part of the smithsonian's it's part of the website even though the smithsonian's are in dc proper and this is the udavar hazi center up in dulles right next to dulles airport by the way you can see you literally drive past the airport to get to this place and of course this was an airport in and of itself this entire museum is inside an airport an aircraft hangar which you can tell by the way it's designed oh there's a guy there i'm sorry to all the people that were in this video uh i tried not to yeah <laughs> oh boy anyway i went up i was like can i do this and he's like the guy's like oh let me go talk to my supervisor because i i don't know what rules there are I know these planes are decommissioned, but I don't know if there's like, they might have some things about photography. Uh, they know, I know for like commercial work, they, you know, they're like, oh, you got to get a license. And I'm like, well, it's not commercial. It's, you know, I have a YouTube channel. I, I put the videos on there. And I think the reason, oh yeah. All right. So this is one of the times I was trying to adjust the camera. Hope you enjoyed darkness. There we go. The cool thing about it's I guess it's like a cool thing. It's an interesting thing about 3D is if one of the lenses is like blurry or, you know, it's not focused. It feels like one of your eyes, how it would look in real life if your eye wasn't focused. It's a cool effect. But they I understand why they thought that because I actually whenever I do these videos, I always bring my IMAX hat. I don't think I brought it when I did Sully, but I did bring it when I went here. I believe and so they probably thought I, I worked for IMAX or something and I wish I did oh man I wish I did but I don't uh, so I talked to him he's like oh, I gotta go talk to the supervisor you can find a supervisor he's like oh, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be all right uh, and I was like hey you know I'll just come talk to you 
before I leave and ask you if it's alright, you know, because by that time, he would have found a supervisor, and we would have gotten that smoothed out. And I talked to him, and he was like, yeah, it's cool. Whenever I point the camera up, it's because I'm not trying to film people. That, that explains that. It's a lot of interesting plain parts here. And on the other side of this, on the other side of the aisle, which I might show a little bit in this moment, I do know that I show it later, is some uh, World War II uh, German, uh, Nazi planes. And that big silver one right there that I'm looking at the wing of, this is actually, this might not be the plane I think that it'd be. If I'm not mistaken, that, yeah, that's the Enola Gay. But we're gonna we're gonna get closer to that later and talk a little bit. Actually let's talk about it right now. That is the Enola Gay. That's the uh, plane that dropped the most powerful bomb that's ever been dropped on another civilization. As far as I'm aware. Uh I don't know about bombs and stuff because I'm not a maniac. But I do like history, and it's really cool to be able to see uh something that has had such an impact on the world had such an impact uh, in a museum like that. It was just like, there it is. Like, this is the plane that I always heard about in the history books and I learned about in class. And, and now I, I could see it. You know, it was real. It's cool. It's cool to see that. It's like meeting a celebrity. Um, and, I, and I'm not saying that's a whole can of worms. I'm not saying like, oh, I think, you know, what what we did in world, you know, dropping the bombs like that was right. Uh, certainly dropping bombs on civilians is probably not a smart move. And I'm walking into territory that I probably shouldn't be walking into. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna digress. But it was just it's just cool to see these historical planes here. And that's a Concorde right there. Very fast plane. Lots of fat. Oh, there's my hand. I, I tried to I lifted my hand in real life up tried to bat my hand out of the way because it was too close to my face, but that wouldn't have worked. Very shiny planes. This video is coming out a lot better than I thought it was going to, to be honest. It's kind of hard to tell. It's a bit jittery in my editing program since it's so long. But, uh, so, way, to, to digress way back to like a million year, uh, hours ago, what I was trying to say is that I remember going out and people being interested in the 3D rig. They're like, oh, what's that about? I'm like, oh, this is a uh, do 3D video, stereoscopic 3D video. I had a few people uh, say something about it while I was here. And that guy I was talking to earlier was asking about it. I'm like, yeah, he's asking about it. how do you edit it? And like, oh, you know, uh, a lot of editing programs from the early 2010s will have stuff like this. I have an editing program that does a lot of the brunt work for me, does the audio auto stereoscopic fix which is a godsend because if i didn't have that i don't know what i would do these videos wouldn't look nearly as good so shout outs to the guy that invented that and it's just nice uh it, and i think with 3d being pushed so heavily and i i'm gonna talk about that i have a few conspiracies about that check out this plane does this guy look familiar to you guys for animation fans, you'll recognize this as the main character from Planes, whose name I don't know, and I'm not going to look up, but I thought it was cool that they had a plane painted like that. Neato. And we're going to come across another uh, a jet later, which is one of the most beautiful planes I've ever seen. And it's it's because of the color scheme too, because I'm a huge fan of blue and gold. Such a very cool regal color scheme. So 3D is being pushed pretty heavily now, and I think a lot of it is due to Avatar 2, and they really want people to see it in 3D and IMAX 3D, and I think that's because James Cameron is still really pushing for it. And I, which I completely get. I'm not like saying like, oh, James Cameron is a big dummy. No, I'm totally on board with that. I just... The difference between before when they were pushing it and now is that we've had like over 10 years of experience and work doing 3D. And 3D has gotten a million times better. Post-conversions have gotten just so incredibly good that one of the big issues that people had is that movies that weren't filmed in 3d looked like crap the post-conversion jobs were really bad but now they look incredible like they're flawless 
in some cases post-converted movies look better than movies shot natively please don't rip my head off about that I, i've made a video about this the pros and cons uh, you guys should go check that out lessons in 3d native versus post conversion here's another really good shot of the nose of this plane coming out perhaps didn't push it as much as i could have but it's okay oh no this is good oh man it it's some cool stuff. If I had more time, if my batteries would have lasted longer, I definitely would have spent more time with each plane to make sure I got the best pop out. Not that pop out is everything for 3D. Of course, the 3D helps uh, people, you know, just put things into spatial recognition or something like that. By having the 3D here, you do get a, a sense of scale and scope of how big this building is. That, I mean, like, you can tell in 2D that it's pretty big, but in 3D, you just, since we live our world like that, even if the 3D here is is exaggerated, since we see the world in 3D, then we have a better idea, uh, spatially-wise, of how big this place is. It's one of the advantages of 3D. Helps with size and scale and scope. But I hope that this time that they're pushing 3D because they actually believe in it as a format. I know 3D never really went away. And I hope it's more than just we want to push 3D for Avatar 2. Which I've made two videos about how good the 3D is in that movie. Or that movie. I mean, yeah, the 3D will be good. But the trailer alone was just incredible. And the IMAX 3D presentation. I'm not going to get into that. I already talked about it twice. You guys know how I feel. Watch your head. You almost hit that... Uh, pillar there look at this big old boeing you walk in here and just these massive jumbo jets that like they were used people flew they sat in this plane and they were flying around man all these planes were used it's cool it's really humbling seeing these massive flying machines and it's also amazing to me that we have wire strong enough to hold them from the ceiling like obviously the planes have been gutted out and they're nothing but shells but still hey we looped all the way back around on this side these are a bunch of older propeller prop propeller propelly boy planes i keep getting off topic the point is is i hope that 3d's resurgence now people will give it another chance hopefully because they pushed 3d for doctor strange 2 really hard and it was worth it. I thought the 3D in the movie was very good. And I missed the opportunity to see it in IMAX 3D again just because I dragged my feet on it. But I was happy to see it at least once. And Sam Raimi, he's no stranger to 3D movies. He did Oz the Great and Powerful. And that was a really good 3D movie. My man knows the format. And a movie like Doctor Strange, a character like Doctor Strange, is tailor-made for 3D. Works very well. I'm going to be following this guy. I hope 3D, when it resurges, it's like an actual resurgence and people look at it and more effort is put into it instead of just doing quick cash grabs and not really putting much thought into the 3D. I hope that it's uh, here to stay. And well, I mean, obviously it didn't go away, but it, it this resurgence is more of a permanent thing rather than just kind of a, you know, it starts to slowly dwindle and the only movies doing it are like big budget superhero movies. And even the Batman didn't have 3D. There's some animated movies that didn't do 3D. But if it does take off again, you know, they're going to need them stereographers. And, uh, and I'm not trying to toot my own horn here, but I I'd say I'm pretty okay. Pretty knowledgeable about what I do. I know there are probably more qualified individuals who aren't me that could maybe do a better job. But I'm learning, getting there. I'll definitely keep my eye out, though. Keep my ear to the ground. I will say this. there It was like a year or so ago. There was a guy, and I don't remember his name. I think his name might have been Gary. He was like, you know, if I still... If I had my 3D company still, if he was still doing 3D, he said he would have hired me. And that's a good sign. That, you know... If... It's like... 
I'm going to equate it to this. It's not like this, but it's kind of like this. It's like when you, you meet somebody and they're like, oh, man, you know, if I wasn't in a relationship, I would totally date you. And it's like, oh, thanks for the sentiment. I guess. look at this. I don't even know if that's supposed to be. I think I think it's like a glider plane. You're like, ah, oh, well, oh, here's another pointy stick. I walk past it and I'm like, wait, a pointy stick. I got to get it in the thing whoa crazy we're coming up on that really beautiful plane i was talking about by the way i spent a lot of time on this stick i was really proud of this uh am i gonna move i'm okay oh no wow did you guys see the the pointy stick i just wanted to make sure you guys saw that it's like, oh, man, you know, I, I, I'm flattered, but it, also I'm kind of disappointed now because, you know, you're really cool. But it's not exactly like that, I, I guess, with what Gary said, where I'm like, oh, wow, that's, you know, I, I know that I have the skills to pay the bills at that point. This plane right here, Blue Angel, these are stunt planes. They beautiful color scheme, beautiful jets, man. I remember seeing these guys at air shows. Maybe I should go to an air show. Yeah, 3D air show. Of course, the uh, the 3D wouldn't be too great because the planes are going to be way off in the distance and there's not going to be much volume to them. But you know, we'll see. Anything could happen. But I I know at least that my skills are good enough. I have enough of a passion to for people to be interested and see that I could probably do this professionally. And I think I could. I haven't really done anything quote unquote professionally like that, so I'd be nervous about getting it wrong, but clearly there must be something there if people want to hire me. I just realized I have a hole in my pants. I didn't throw this these pants away. I probably should do that. They're kind of tight on me anyway. Probably too small. Yeah, I throw ripped a hole in your pants. I've done it twice. Well, this is the third one. <sighs> look, at that, look at that. This pokey sticks. So many what are they jousting in the air? There's probably it's probably like an air reading instrument. Uh some a plane enthusiast can tell me what those pointy sticks are. Are they there specifically for cool 3D shots? Maybe that's it. 